Vibhavari Shesha Aloka Provesha Nidrachari Uta Jeeva Bolo Hari Hari Mokonda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Griva Bolo Hari Hari Mokunda Morari Rama Krishna Haya Griva Nashim Mahavamana Shri Madhusudana Rajendra Nandana Shama Nashim Mahavamana Shri Madhusudana Rajendra Nandana Shama Bhutana Gatana Kaita Bhashatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Bhutana Gatana Kaita Bhashatana Jaya Dasarati Rama Yashoda Dula Lao Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Purandara Vrindavana Purandara Yashoda Dula Lao Govinda Gopala Vrindavana Purandara Gopi Priya Janna Radhika Ramana Bhuvana Sundara Bhora Gopi Priya Janna Radhika Ramana Bhuvana Sundara Bhora Ravana Thakura Makana Tiskara Gopi Janna Vashtrahari Ravana Thakura Makana Tiskara Gopi Janna Vashtrahari Jai 
Radhakala Gopavinda Pala Chesa Hari Vamsi Dhari Raja Radhakala Gopavinda Pala Chitta Hari Vamsi Dhari Yogendra Bandhana Srinanda Nandana Raja Janha Bhaya Hari Yogendra Bandhana Srinanda Nandana Raja Janha Bhaya Hari Nabina Radha Rupa Mano Hara Mohana Bam Sidi Nabina Radha Rupa Mano Hara Mohana Bam Sidi Yashodanandana Kamsani Shudana Nikunjara Sabila Yashodanandana Kamsani Shudana Nikunjara Sabila Kadamba Kana Rasa Parayana Prinda Bipina Nibasi Kadamba Kana Rasa Parayana Rinda Vipi Nani Vasi Ananda Vardana Prima Nikesana Pula Shere Yojaka Kama Ananda Bhajana Prima Nikitana Pula Shere Yojaka Kama Gopanga Nagana Gopanga Nagana Rasa Parayana Vrinda Vipina Nivasi Gopanga Nagana Rasa Parayana Go Pangana Gana Chitta Vinodhana Samasta Guna Gana Tama Go Pangana Gana Chitta Vinodhana Samasta Guna Gana Tama 
Yamuna Jeevana Kili Parayana Manasa Chandra Chakora Namashura Das, O Krishna Yash, Ako Vachana Manamora. Namashura Das, O Krishna Yash, Ako Vachana Manamora. Vibhavadi Shesha Aloka Provesha Nidra Chadi Uta Jeeva Bolo Hari Hari Mokunda Murari Rama Krishna Hayagriva Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate It's okay, just, just, yeah, back a bit. That's good, just like that. Then everyone can see. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskratyam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirhayat Nasta Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, Chapter 1 The History of the Life of Ajamila Text number eight. Tasmat Purai Vasva Eha Papa Niskrit Yo Yateta Mrityor Avipad Yatatmana Dos Ashya Jesva Guru, Guru Lagaram Yata Bishak Chikitseta Rujam Nidarit 
Nidhānavit Tasmat puraivas vahit papa niskrito Yate tamrityor avipadyatatmana Dosh Ashya Drisva Guru Lakaram Yata Bishak Chik Seta Rujam Nida Nan Navit Tasmat Puraivas Vahipapa Niskrito Yatetam Rityor Avipadyatatmana Dosh Ashyadrisva Guru Lakaram Yata Bishop Chik Seta Rujam Nidanavit Tasmat Purai was Vahi Papa Niskrito Yet hate Amrit Yor Avipadyatatmana Dosh Ashya Drisva Guru Lagaram Yata Bishak Chikit Seta Rujam Nid Anavit Tasmat, Tasmat. Therefore, Therefore, Pura, Pura. Before, Before. Eva. Eva, Indeed, Indeed. Atta. Atta, Very quickly, Eha, In this life, In this life. Papa Niskrito, to become free from the reaction of sinful activities. To become free from the reaction of sinful activities. Yajit, yat, 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 uh, yat, yat, One should endeavor. One should endeavor. Mrityo, mrityo death. Death. Avipadjita. Avipadjita. Not troubled by 
disease and old age. Not troubled by disease and old age. Atmana, Atmana with the body. With the body. Doshashya dosha of the sinful activities. Of the sinful activities. Drisva, Drisva. Continu con Estimating. Con huh? Estimating. 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 Guru Vignam. Guru Vignam. The heaviness of the heaviness or lightness. The heaviness or lightness. Yata. Yata. Just like. Just like. Bishak. Bishak. A physician. A physician. Chikitsita. Chikitsita. Should would treat. Would treat. Rup, rupam. Yeah. Of this ease. Of this ease. Nidana. Nidana. It bit. One who is expert in. Diagnosis. One who is expert in diagnosis. Translation. Therefore, before one's next, before one's next, before one's next death comes, as long as one's body is strong enough, one should quickly adopt the process of atonement. According to Shastra, otherwise one's time will be lost and the reactions of his sins will increase. As an expert physician can diagnose and treat a disease according to its gravity, one should undergo atonement according to the severity of one's sins. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. The Dharma Shastras, like the Manu Samhita, prescribe that a man who has committed murder should be hung and his own life sacrificed in atonement. Previously, the yagna was followed all over the world. But since people are becoming, since people are becoming atheists, they are stopping capital punishment. This is, this is not wise. Herein it is said that a physician, a physician who knows how to diagnose a disease prescribes medicine accordingly. If the disease is very serious, the medicine must be strong. The weight of a murderer's sin is very great and therefore according to Manasamita, a murderer should be killed. By killing a murderer, the government shows mercy to him. Because if a murderer is not killed his, in this life, he will be killed and forced to suffer many times in future lives. Since people do not know about the next, they do not know about the next life and the intricate workings of nature. They manufacture their own laws. But they should properly consult the established injunctions of the Shastras and not and not 
and not according uh, and act accordingly in india men in in india even today the hindus committing the hindus commonly often take advice from expert scholars regarding how to uh, how to counteract sinful activities in christianity also there is a process of confession and atonement therefore atonement is required and atonement must be undergone according to the gravity of one's sinful acts Om Magyarna Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chatsur Unmilitanyena Tathmai Shri Gurave Namaha All right, so atonement. Sukadeva Goswami was asked by Maharaj Parikshit how to save people from going to hell. Maharaj Parikshit had heard about the hells. Sukadeva Goswami was describing the different places in the universe and he was talking about the, the hellish planets and the different conditions of hell and the different sufferings which people undergo for their sinful reactions. And uh, Maharaj Parikshit, being a Vaishnava, he wanted to help these people. He felt compassion for them, hearing about the different sufferings which people are undergoing. He felt how to save them from this. So he asked Sukadeva Goswami what could be done to save them from going to hell. So Sukadeva Goswami is testing the intellect of Maharaj Parikshit and he is telling him initially he is telling him that to save people from hell they should undergo atonement they should perform appropriate activities to counteract their sins and Srila Prabhupada describes how even in Christian church they have this tradition in the Catholic Church, the Roman Catholics, they will go for confession and they will go to the priest and they'll tell the priest, you know, oh, last night I drank alcohol, oh, I did this, I stole that, I told this lie, or I got angry at this person and I shouted at them. And, and so then the priest will give some atonement the priest will tell them, all right, maybe you have to give charity, you have to donate to the, to the church, or you have to donate to the poor, and you have to, they also have a rosary in the Catholic tradition, they have a rosary and they chant on the beads, they will chant, Hail Mary, Mother of God, have mercy on my soul. So they have a prayer like that and they chant. And they will preside to them appropriate atonement in accordance to the gravity of the sin which they have committed there will be a more serious a greater atonement and so just like if you if you steal cucumbers it's not like the person who stole diamonds you know somebody steals diamonds then that, that you have to do a bigger atonement but if you just stole a cucumber, maybe it won't be such a big atonement. So according to the gravity of the sin, and Prabhupada discusses particularly about the murderer, because Prabhupada noted how it's a practice nowadays that many countries in the world, they don't enforce capital punishment, but they do things like life imprisonment keep them in prison for the rest of their life. 
and sometimes life imprisonment will mean after 15 years or something then they'll be released. But Prabhupada quotes from the Manu Samhita, the Manu Samhita prescribed that a mur murderer should be given capital punishment, he should be killed. And that is the mercy of the state. But if the person is not killed, then he suffers serious reactions in the next life. In the next life he will be killed and maybe he will suffer different kinds of hell because he has committed a serious, uh, a serious offense. So this process of atonement is being prescribed by Sukadeva Goswami but actually this is not the ultimate process of atonement. To get freed from sinful activities, just performing atonement does not take away the desire for sin. The, we have to understand that sinful activities are caused by ignorance. And because of ignorance, people engage in sinful activities and the sinful activities bring reactions. So you atone for the sins, you do some atonement, then you think I'll go on sinning. You do more sins. We, we see how people sometimes they get sexual diseases. They're habituated to illicit sex and then they get some sexual disease. There's different sexual diseases like syphilis, gonorrhea, and AIDS, and these different things, all due to uh, people being very sexually inclined. So they suffer, and they have to undergo very painful treatment for these kinds of diseases. Very painful and very humiliating also to be, uh, to have this kind of disease. One of the devotees was telling me, one devotee, is a, she's a doctor and she was working in the hospital and one of the patients there in the hospital had AIDS and he was dying from AIDS and she, he was uh, an Indian man, you know, so she tried to talk to him and told him, you know, Bhagavad Gita, you know, I, I can, would you like to read the Bhagavad Gita, you know? He said, oh no, no, I'm not interested in that. <laughs> the poor fellow, he's dying of AIDS and he's in, the, you know, a lot of pain and uncomfortable, a lot of suffering and she was trying to help him trying to give him some knowledge to uh, enlighten him a little about his future but he said no I'm not interested I don't want that so even at the point of death people are sometimes so ignorant they don't want to take advantage to change their position to change their condition so we have to understand that the, what is being mentioned here by Sukadeva Goswami is not his actual thinking, but it's only his uh, way of testing the alertness of Maharaj Parikshit. He wants to make sure that Maharaj Parikshit himself is not convinced about the process of atonement. And ordinary people, common people, they think that, yes, that's good. I've done something wrong, make up for it, do something good. And, you know, you know they stole some money. And you find people like that, people who stole a lot of money, they'll give a little charity. <laughs> and you go to a bar, you can be distributing books. And you, people are sitting there drinking alcohol and, and you come by, they'll give you a donation. 
because they know they're engaging in activities which are not pious. They know they're doing activities which are really not doing them any good. And then they want to make up for it a little bit, they give some charity. You get people like that. Kavi Chandraswami told me how in Japan they would go for book distribution and they would go at midnight and they would go outside the clubs because people come out from the nightclubs and they found that's a good time to approach people in Japan. Otherwise during the daytime, you know, nobody will stop, nobody will talk to you. But you get them coming out of a nightclub or something, you know, they've been in the nightclub for hours drinking and, and they come out and, you know, and the monk comes by and they think, oh yeah, yeah, let me give donation. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, this is the way pious activities work like that. This is kind of what people think is prayaschit or uh, the process of atonement. It doesn't stop sinful activities. Just like people go to the church and they confess. And every week they come and confess. Every week it goes on. It's, it's a custom that you should, did you go to confession yet? The Catholics will ask you, did you go to confess? Oh, I have to go to confess. And they'll go every week. And every, it means every week they're doing sins. It becomes a habit. They don't stop. So this kind of atonement is useless. It's, we will see how it's compared to the bathing of the elephant. Just like in Mayapur, we have these two big elephants there. And you can see how when they bathe them, you know, they... We have a bath there for the elephants, they bathe and sometimes they hose them and they get nice and clean and then after they've been bathed and everything, they come out and they throw dirt over themselves. They are, they, yeah, they will throw the dirt over themselves. This is the elephant's custom, they, they do like this. And so people are also like that. They will do these sinful activities. They do their sins, they make some atonement, and then they do more sins. <clears throat> yeah. uh, you know, they, they maybe, by some corrupt means, they cheat people, and, they, and they, they get a lot of money, and then they give a little charity. <laughs> right? They got a lot of money. Gamblers also, you'll find people who gamble that they like to give charity because they know it helps them to win in their gambling. They go in the casino and, and they gamble and they, if they win, you know, they, 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 they like to give some charity. So this, this uh, process of Atonement, performing pious activities to counteract sinful activities is, has no real meaning to it. Although it's prescribed, it's prescribed in the Dharma Shastras, but it's not the ultimate process of atonement. It's not going to stop sins. So this is the fault that while doing atonement by, while performing some prayaschit is in itself good, it's not going to change a person from sins. Just like they have prisons and you know that they, they, they try to change the name instead of calling it a prison, they call it a correction institution. You know, people should go for correction. But putting people in prison doesn't necessarily correct them. You put them in the prison for some time, they come out, and then again they come, continue to perform their crimes. It, it didn't take away their desire for sin. 
the ultimate correction, of course, is Krishna consciousness. And in Srila Prabhupada's time, it happened, uh, Srila Prabhupada happened to see the cover of a Time magazine. And the cover of the Time magazine said, crime, what to do? And, and Prabhupada was attracted by this and he, he, he told the devotees that they should contact the police department and that we should offer to help the police department to solve the problems of crime. And one of the, it, it happened that while Prabhupada was in one city there in the US, the devotees arranged for the head of the police department to come and meet Srila Prabhupada. And Srila Prabhupada told the policemen about how they could help to solve the problems of rising crime. Rising crime, you know, every country in the world, they spend a lot of money to keep people in prisons. You know, the money which they have to spend, particularly in countries like USA, there's so many people in prisons. And they spend so much money to maintain the prison houses. And, of course, they're not helping the people but actually the people who go into prison, they become even bigger criminals after they go to jail. Because once they're put into prison, then they associate with all kinds of other criminals and they become even more sinful. Uh, we had an incident in Bangkok. There was, somebody was breaking into the house where one of the devotees was living. And they, they knew that somebody's coming into the house in the night. So they arranged one night, they waited up, and they hid, and they saw there was this teenage young boy coming into the house. And so they, they came out and they got him. And they said, okay, we're gonna call the police. We're bringing the police now to arrest you. So the, the policeman came and the policeman talked, he said, he, he told the devotees, he said, you know, if you put this boy in prison, he'll become ruined. That it's better you let him go because if you, if, if, if you, if I take him to, to the jail, put him in the jail, He'll associate with all the other criminals there and he'll become more sinful. But we'll just give him a good, we'll give him a warning and tell him if we catch you again, we're going to put you in jail. But he said, if you put him in jail, he'll have no hope. <laughs> so the devotee said, okay, <laughs> let him go. <laughs> so they gave him a warning, you know, and told him catch you again, we're going to put you in the prison. But the policeman himself said, if you put him in the prison, if you put him in the, the jail with the other criminals, he'll be completely ruined. He'll have no chance. And so Prabhupada's process for solving crime was that there should be a Krishna conscious program and there should be kirtan and there should be prasadam. And if you feed everyone nice prasadam and have a nice kirtan, the people will be happy. And they won't be so much inclined towards all their sinful activities. Because the chanting of the holy name and the prasadam will be so purifying to them that they'll give up all their sinful activities. That is the effect. Chanting Hare Krishna mantra and having prasadam, it changes people's lives. The very simple program, very simple. And Prabhupada was saying, he said, we can do it. He said, the government just have to help us. The government should provide for us. They should give us, just like nowadays in India, they have this program for feeding the children that every, all the children should get two meals a day and they, they bring food to the schools and the school children all get 
their food. The government pays something to it. The government sponsors it. And so Prabhupada wanted that the government should sponsor our Krishna consciousness movement and let people all come and have prasadam and chant Hare Krishna. I said they can, their lives can be changed. So like this, if, if this is the power of devotional service. Of course, people don't know that they're doing devotional service. But nevertheless, even though they don't know, the process is so powerful that it acts. The example is given that just like sometimes you don't, somebody doesn't want to take medicine. They don't want to take medicine. So you put the medicine in their food and the person eats the food. Now he didn't know he was taking the medicine, but the medicine will act because the medicine was in the food. So he doesn't, didn't know he was taking the medicine, but the, me the medicine will still act. In the same way, people eat Krishna Pusaram and they hear the chanting of the holy names, it will have effect. It takes effect. So this is the solution to sinful activities. And the process of devotional service is such that it uproots even the desire for sin. In the nectar of devotion, Srila Prabhupada has described in some detail the different stages of sinful activities. There's bija and kuta and parabda and aparabda, four different stages of sinful reactions. So parabda karma, the sins which are manifest in the body, just like disease, that's a sign. It, it is our parabda karma. We have some, uh, we all have some kind of karma from our past activities. So that is manifest in the body. But there's another aparabdha karma, the sins which are not yet manifest, but they're waiting and in the future they will manifest. Sins which are coming from past lives because the, the different seeds of sinful activities all sprout at different times. Just like if you do any gardening, probably you people don't know gardening, do you? <laughs> Did you ever go in the garden? Did you ever get your hands dirty? Really? You know how to grow vegetables? Yeah? So you know when you put the seeds in the ground, they don't all come up together. Some come up quickly and some come up later, you know? And just like flowers, you grow flowers. Some flowers will come up early and then some will come later. And similarly, so seeds, the reactions of our sins are also like that. Some sinful reactions come very quickly and other sinful reactions are coming over a longer time period. And sinful reactions are not just from this life but from the previous life. And we have sinful reactions like are, we're born in a particular country and the country also has karma just like where they kill a lot of cows. So there's karma on all of the citizens because the cows are being killed in that country. And uh, it said the head of the state, he has to take one sixth of the karma of the whole country for all the sinful reactions. So to be the head of a state is you know, you really take a lot of karma. It's very heavy to actually take a position like that. Uh, Worshipping deities is also a big responsibility. We get 
reactions very quickly if the deities are not worshipped properly, if there's any deviations in the worship of deity, taking care of cows are also very, very, it's a very serious thing, very big responsibility. If we have cows and we don't look after them, then you get a heavy karma for that. And also maintaining an ashram is a big responsibility. Maintaining the temple and the ashram, if, they, if, they're not, if the people are not properly uh, maintained and looked after, then it, it's a big responsibility. And you can get reactions for that. You have a family. If you have a family, if a mother has children and doesn't care for them properly, then there's karma. You're going to get karmic reactions for that. So karma comes in the human form of life. The, we're earning our karma now in this human body. Animals, they're suffering their karma. But the human, we're earning the karma. This body, the karma stand. So we have to use this body very carefully for the service of Krishna. And in that way we can get free of karma. So karma can be removed. Yast vendra gopam atavendra mahoswakam Bandana rupak palabhajana mapanoti karmani nirdahiti kintu chabakti bhajam govindam adipursam tamaham bhajam. That uh, Lord Brahma is saying the process of devotional service burns up to the roots all fruitive activities of those who are imbued with devotion. It burns up to the roots. All the, all the karma, all the fruit of it, it's all removed by devotional service. So that is the power of devotional service. It can remove the karma. We don't have to suffer karma. We don't have to be a victim of our karma. We can overcome karma by devotional service. Of course, that doesn't mean that we won't, we'll live forever. Although you see like that in Ishopanishad, it said one may aspire to live for hundreds of years if he continues going on doing work in that way. Hmm. One can aspire to live for, do you want to live for hundreds of years? It's not a very good idea. Yeah. Markandeya Rishi and Srimad Bhagavatam got a benediction that he could live through a night of Brahma. It was suffering. It was so much suffering. We would think, oh, very nice. People want to have a long life. Oh, it's suffering. We have that, that, that man Vasudev, but Vasudev Prayana, you know the, the devotee? He lives here in KL. He, he's 80 something and he has to go for dialysis every other day. And uh, he was talking about, he said, it, it's a, yeah, it's just suffering. He said, why live? He said, just suffering. All the time, suffering. And that Chitra Mataji up in Penang. You know, she also has to go dialysis. I saw her arms, you know, arm, both arms and then the neck, now in the neck. Oh my God, you know, just so much suffering. The material body is just meant for suffering. These bodies, they're not meant for enjoyment. They're meant for suffering. We just suffer with them. You can get even some little will give you so much pain and trouble. 
I, I, I had an ankle, I got an infection in my ankle, I suffered so much. Could I ever get pleasure from my ankle? You know, could, I, could my ankle ever give me a happiness, give me any enjoyment? But it could make, give you so much pain. So that's the nature of this human body. It's meant for pain, just to give us so much pain and trouble. And so, when we understand that, then we become more serious to get out of this world. Not to take another body, not to come back again, but to get out from this world. And that's why the process of atonement, which is being prescribed here, will not be accepted by any intelligent person. They'll think, you know, why should I do this? It's not going to stop my sinful activities. I'm still going to keep doing my, my sins. So we have to understand what is the proper atonement? What is the best way to get free from sin? And that is devotional service. All right, any question, comment? If you suffer due to diseases, is that a form of, do we take that as a form of atonement to pay back our sins? No. Your suffering, your disease, your suffering due to disease, that's your karma. That's not your atonement. <laughs> no. You could, we could say, well, that's our karma, karmic reactions which come on us. But if we continue to do bhakti yoga, then that is atonement. Yeah, if you're doing bhakti, of course, bhakti, well, bhakti yoga is not simply an atonement. Bhakti yoga is the process by which we can give up the desire for even sin. Bhakti yoga is a, a, the, a process by which we can get relief from karma. All phases of karma. You can nullify all, take away all of the different stages of sinful desires by bhakti yoga. Bhakti yoga is the process of purification. And bhakti yoga is the, the, the process by which we can get free from the material world, from the world of birth and death. Atonement is more about how we can continue to try to enjoy the material world. What do we need to do to enjoy, to go on enjoying? or just to counteract our sins so that we continue, we may continue with our life of sense gratification. So we should not commit, we should not atonement. Well, the, the point is that the atonement is not going to change you. Acts of sacrifice and charity and austerity should never be given up. So it's good to do these things. Sacrifice, charity and austerity, these things are, are good. You, they, you could say they're all atonements. But we do these activities not just to get relief from sin, but we perform these activities for the pleasure of Krishna. We do our charity and our austerity and our sacrifice. It's all for Krishna, for his pleasure. But ordinary people, common people, they may do these things for their own sake, so that they can enjoy more the material world. They want, that's their thinking. 
how can I enjoy more? How I can be comfortable here? So, we have to understand this world is the prison house. Don't try to be comfortable in the prison. You want to get out. And how to get out. So that is Bhakti Yoga. Okay, Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki